Thank you guys. Thanks everybody yeah. for being here. Uh, Walid, thank you so much for taking the time out. I, are you in France right now? Yes, in France, yes. Thank oh, you for the opportunity. Absolutely. So um, tell me, why don't we start with, uh, what are you doing now? Where are you working? For now, I'm not uh, really working on a 3D project. Oh, I was okay. uh, really busy with uh, work uh, not related uh, to 3D. Mm -hmm. Okay. But great. I will start uh, soon a uh, uh, steel mill environment. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. All right. But if you want, if you want, uh, if uh, someone wants to see uh, something in uh, specific, uh, can ask. I, I can open uh, open the file. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll look at here in just a second. So, um, if we're looking at, let's think. Uh, gosh, I mean, any one of your works. But uh, you guys can head over to his art station. It is artstation forward slash w a l i d as in dog dash k p. And that'll get you over to his art station where you can look. Um, but if I'm looking at your work, I'm looking at this gothic confessional. And yeah. we're looking at this tutorial. I think this is one of the things that really caught my eye. Um, there's just some amazing uh, detail in here. So why don't, you know, um, the job that you have listed on ArtStation is prop artist. Is, yes. Is that what you do in games or is that the, is that the job you do or do you do something different? That's what I was mainly doing uh, as a freelance uh, artist. Yeah. Mainly props and uh, stuff like that. But uh, now I will work as an environment artist. Uh, which one, sorry? In a... Sorry? What kind of artist? Environment. Oh, yes, environment. Yes. Great. Sorry so, for my uh, accent. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, please. I'm grateful you're um, you're here and we get to learn from you. So, if you're working as so, you're do you consider that a level up from prop artist to environment artist? I will not say a level up. It's uh, really different. Like you can't spend uh, as much time as you do on uh, on uh, environment as you do on props. It's yeah. a really different uh, approach. Yeah. If you get that, uh, it can take uh, really your <clears throat> sorry your time in a uh, hero asset uh, like that. Okay. Like the, the detail, etc. Okay. In uh, environment, you okay, you have to use a lot of tiling uh, texture. Okay. So it's more like uh, it. it's more sorry to interrupt. It's more like world building and things like that. Yes. Okay. So what is a job? What is it? Um, let's let's actually work with what you did as a prop artist. What does a prop artist do? In what does your day look like? You come in, you start modeling. What's what's your process as a prop artist? You will be given a, a specific uh, concept art. Mm -hmm or mainly a general idea of props to do. The, f the first thing that you will do generally is to seek for reference. That will be uh, the, the props it itself, the material of the, the props, yeah. and uh, how the props is going to be used. Like if there is a re reference here, et cetera. Like for example, if I want a generator, Let's say it's a water pump. Mm -hmm. In what kind of environment it's going to be? But of course, you're not going to have a clean uh, out of the the production uh, generator. Yeah. So you're going to seek for any kind of material, etc., yep. and the context in which it's going to be used. Then you you're going to start the block out. Then uh, HP modeling, LP, etc. Mm -hmm. I think uh, guys are used to that workflow. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. And then you take it all the way to substance and do you put it in the game engine to test or what is your deliverables for people? Yeah, generally you put it in uh, the game engine or the uh, render mm -hmm. if it is a uh, Octane or for VRA or whatever. Mm-hmm. Then you treat the material uh, to make it fit the art style of the project. But yes, we mainly use uh, Substance Painter. As a freelance, that's, that's what I was doing. And how did you? How do you get started 
as a freelancer? Is it something, did you work in, um, in a job first and then kind of go off on your own or did you start as a freelancer? Our first uh, paid job in 3D, yes, was a freelancer mm -hmm. because I'm a, I am a self-taught artist. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really recently have my uh, first job actually in a, in the in a pro, in a studio. Yeah. So yes, I was working alone by myself, by given uh, some little contract by uh, several uh, studio. Yeah. Or uh, indie guy. I saw um, sell stuff on the Unreal uh, Marketplace, Unreal okay. Engine. Okay. Like this stuff. Is that a great place to get clients, the Unreal Marketplace? Yeah, you can get uh, noticed uh, quickly if you, if you get uh, nice uh, content. Mm -hmm. What but kind mainly, of... you will have a job by... Uh, I don't know how to say in English. Maybe it's the same. Moods and the ear, you know? Mm -hmm. Like mood development? Or... Like if we want to share our oh, contact, of this guy is good, etc. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, totally. Got it. Um, so what kind of products on the Unreal Market really sell and help get somebody's name out there? Word of mouth, Rashid's saying. Yeah, yeah, well done, Moss. <laughs> I will, uh, let's go directly. Mainly to create a new pack, you have to seek what people want in the forum uh -huh. and what has not been done uh, yet. Okay. So you got, uh, if you are a props artist, for example, you can check what has already been done what is the quality bar to reach? Yeah. What is the price tag? Gen generally, for the Canon kind of Prof you want to do, mm -hmm. that's how you will get noticed, obviously, to do something uh, new. Got it. But how do you find out what people want? You know, because I can see what they've done on the marketplace, but how do you find out what they want? What are the criteria for you? I will ask uh, the, the, the question to myself first. What okay. I will want to buy, for example. Okay. What's missing here? Yeah. That's how I start, yes. All right. And do you think when you are working along these lines, do you think in terms of categories like sci-fi, fantasy, um, realistic or, or how do you, do you have a particular direction that you, do you favor? I would go with uh, realistic and, uh, more, uh, fantastic, mm -hmm. like steampunk, uh, steampunk and, and, and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Because uh, sci-fi is a bit, uh, it's, uh, Overcluttered, you know, there is a lot of uh, sci fi yeah. stuff. Too much. It's really hard to do something new in sci fi today. Okay. So I will not bother. I love that. And do something like a medieval, uh, steampunk. There is a lot of uh, cyberpunk stuff uh, lately. Okay. That works really well. Okay. Cyberpunk stuff and um... steampunk. And steampunk. Medieval. Okay. Medieval. Realistic. Yeah. Okay. Stay away from sci-fi. Yeah. For now, I think it's a bit of our Yes. Great. Okay. So this is really neat. This is a great way for somebody to get exposure of their work. Um, what are some of the criteria that you think are, are important for somebody to be kind of successful putting something like this together? Is it, you know, is there a certain, I don't know, quality bar they need to have in substance? Like how, how can they, how can they um, prepare themselves? I would look at the, already at the, the pack already available in the marketplace yeah. and try to see how they build their stuff. For yeah. example, if you click here, you already have some kind of overview image well, mm -hmm. of course there is none here. Let me see. 
we're looking at a modular school pack. Um, yeah. And now we're looking at a desert asset pack on. So you can see on this kind of overview image, you can see uh, how eco-restricted ego uh, is the asset, mm -hmm. how much asset there is. Yeah. Like you can see the modular stuff, etc. And here you have the description. This is a good starting point to know which quality bar to seek for, what you will have to do, considering your pack, mm -hmm. and uh, the general workflow you're mm -hmm. going to use. Because one one main things that work in the Unreal Engine is to have a lot of uh, modularity in your asset. Okay. The shader, etc. A lot of customization. It's one of the big selling points of uh, Unreal Engine Pack. Got it. Okay. And then uh, Rashid was asking, do you need to have licenses or is this just literally a marketplace? You just upload your stuff. Yeah, you just upload your stuff. There is a review uh, process by uh, Epic Game. Okay. That can take uh, one month to one week if you uh, got lucky. But uh, yeah, you just uh, have to uh, send your stuff to Epic, create a, an account, and uh, you, you're done. Okay, got it. All right, now if we're back and then I'm looking at your art station, um, you know, and I'm looking at, let's say you have this piece, the Hellgast Spire BB. It's your, it's a whip. It's about two years old. Um, and uh, on that, uh, you know, there's an enormous amount of detail and, and, um, in the modeling and you know you've got all these like little small pieces and these these little holes in it do you know the one i'm talking about this one is that the yeah that one exactly so when when we're looking at the career or the job of being kind of a freelance prop artist you know uh, the the kind of the question where i'm going with this is what are the criteria what is it that somebody really needs to be able to do um, what are the things that help you be successful and get the clients that you've gotten? Um, this modeling looks very detailed. It looks like it's beautiful, high-res modeling. Um, what are some of the requirements that you've seen that just ha people need to have these skills to be able to do this job? A good uh, knowledge of the uh, topology. No? It's going to us uh, of the uh, topology. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> That's uh, the main things in uh, art surface. Really, I uh, will uh, not argue enough to uh, spend a lot of time to start small when you learn uh, topology and go higher every time. Just a little bit more challenge every day, and you will progress uh, progress really fast. Mm. And uh, when you're get getting really good, uh, you will be uh, faster. You will know where uh, to spend your uh, polycount uh, budget. Yeah. And uh, the general work workflow, will, workflow will be better. Okay, that makes sense to me. Start small. Like, I see this camera that you've built. Um, yeah. You know, and <clears throat> this is just beautifully modeled, this thing. <clears throat> Because when uh, I uh, started learning 3D, mm -hmm. I was always making the mistake of wanting uh, to do uh, yeah, a urge scene. Yes, oh, I want to do that today. Yes, it's going to be amazing. But you never finish it when uh, you start, you know, mm. because it's too much to handle. So uh, you really need to get back to little props, finish them, really put as much detail as you, as you can try to every day, every time push a bit more what you can already do, what you already know, and uh, you will be good. But don't start to uh, urge stuff. You will not finish them most of the time, and uh, you will not progress. Got it. So if you've got a question, because I'm also looking here at your um, your environment, the old composition, the scene, three years old. Um, and is this an example, because like, this looks pretty solid, but is this an example of something that um, you decided to get more into the props or is this, you know, pretty much ready to go? Oh, wow, look at all that. No, that was really the beginning of me uh, learning 3D. Yeah. All of the assets 
almost all of, all of, <coughs> all of the assets are uh, from the free SDK. Okay. You know, the Cray Engine 3 uh, free SDK. Yep. That was really my first time uh, compositing stuff, playing with a uh, wall machine. Mm -hmm. In general, uh, composition. Got it. That's when I started uh, learning uh, modeling. Then there is this one. That was uh, one of the first, I think that's the very first asset pack I ever released, mm -hmm. Rock. Is it, it is uh, rendered in a gray engine? Great. Yeah, and so now, so in the beginning you were self-taught, you learned this by doing world building, using asset packs, then you went and you developed your skill as in the modeling component, in the factor, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, got it. And really built the props and, and focused on the bevels and getting like authenticity in the pieces. Um, and then as you kind of grew along that path, uh, when did you encounter Substance? Substance Painter. I think it was uh, after this project. The camera project? Yes. I discovered uh, Substance Painter. It was uh, so much faster than a uh, quick sell suite mm -hmm. for those uh, who use it. And really, uh, Substance Painter is a Photoshop on a steroid for artists, you know? Yeah, totally. Exactly the same. This is the same thing. Like, do you, uh, let me see if I have a quick asset to play with. We're opening up a Substance Painter here. Gonna see if we can do something. You say quick, but I can never open Substance or an asset quick. <laughs> it's a resource hog. Yes, I think I got something here. Let's hope it's, yes, okay. Yeah, I don't care. So that, that's great because, you know, if some people have this bug, this is because your VRM is full. Let me check. Yes, it is full. So I think I know why. This is because I opened this scene to be ready. Oh. If people want that uh, to be a more in-depth uh, detail. Yeah, no, we need to see that scene. That's beautiful. Uh, I'm going to close it for now. Okay. Because it's, okay, let me reload this quickly. Okay, sorry. So yes, here it is. No, no more the bug. Okay. So let's start from zero. All right, there we go. Just move all of them into a different folder. Okay. So let's say you want to texture or one, whatever the props is. 
and you are used to uh, Photoshop, this is really great. You can start with a fill layer as a base. That's what I start uh, with uh, every time. Mm -hmm. I start to think about how was built uh, the object and uh, work a layer uh, per layer, you know? Yeah. Like if the base is uh, metal, then there is paint. I uh, first do the metal. It's, it's not going to make much sense here, but. Uh, Sprecular. Then let's say you want to add a paint. Oh, one thing uh, to note is that if you have metal under a fill layer, mm -hmm. you you don't you don't have to kill the spec or the metalness in a metal workflow, because otherwise this will override uh, the uh, material properties. Let me explain better. You know, if I uh, delete it, yeah, the paint is going to be metallic. Got it. I have to specify that it's not metal to keep the. What I will do is to add a black mask, for example, mm -hmm. a gener generator, and uh, the mask editor builder, and then I work. Uh, we can start from here. Like get sharp edge, kill the edge. Contrast. Hmm. I don't know why my curvature is uh, broken. Let me see. Yeah, like always when you want to show something, does it work? <laughs> Let me. I understand that. Every time. <laughs> yep. Me quickly retry the experience. Black mask, then add generator, mask editor. Yes, it's working. Okay. So when you have, for example, yes, I will invert that. Yes, okay. If you want to do, uh, for example, edge image, I will always start with a the mask, then add a fill layer. For example, then a grunge or procedural, procedural. And here you can play for those uh, use it to Photoshop with all the, the uh, fusion uh, method. So here I will try light thin max. Here we go.
don't hesitate to add a little bit of height to further uh, emphasize the fact that this is a, this is a, a layer. Really subtle, like 0 0.2, maybe. And there is seams here. Try to blue it. Yes. Here I'm hiding uh, the part I don't want to be uh, uh, affected by the uh, the paint because it looked uh, really bad. Okay. Up. Okay. Try to break as much as possible as possible the uh, tiling by adding another mask that you multiply. Or subtract, subtract in this situation, and you invert. Yes, there we go. This is the kind of thing that it was really, really slow in a quick cell suite. And here, you know, you got a full control. It's non-destructive. You can always change stuff. You can add an author or a generator on top, for example, like light. To frozen. Like if you want, uh, for example, the top to be affected or the bottom. Yeah. All this kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, it's such a beautiful software. I see you're just stacking generator after generator after generator on top of it. That's really cool to see that. Um, are you blending layers between them? Uh, so let me say it this way. Are you setting the blending modes differently? Yeah, depending on the mask, yes. Okay. Sometimes you have to fiddle to know exactly uh, what will do what. Yeah. Because uh, it depends on the, the above uh, mask. Mm -hmm. But generally, it's, uh, it's always the same. You know, multiply, darken, lighten, linear, a dodge, subtract, and uh, screen most of the time. Got it. Okay, and so um, Monica's got a good question. <laughs> I like this question. It's a little, uh, but basically the question is, um, is the workflow more towards, you know, what does this button do? What does that button do? <laughs> kind of the, you know, I call it the clever monkey style. Um, you know, and is that the process that you recommend or, you know, is there some scientific process or what? The first time you open a software, yes, this is exactly what you have to do. <laughs> yeah. Try, try in everything, making as fast as possible mistake. Mm -hmm. The more, the more often you do mistake in the beginning, the less you will do the same uh, later. Here it looked like it, it looked like I didn't know what was doing what. 
but you will have to fiddle even, even when uh, you get users to it to see uh, what kind of re results it is going to give you. Got it. Just keep trying, cycle through the problems, and you develop it from there, right? Yeah, solve the problem. Okay, great. Well, now I'd love to kind of shift a little bit here and talk about that um, that Gothic confessional you built because one of the issues that we have here um, in the boot camp and in dealing with the environment stuff is how do you do relief work? How do you do ornamental work? Do you sculpt the ornamental work? Do you do it in Substance Designer? Is it an alpha? And then especially the relief work because you've got some beautiful relief work. Um, in in uh, well, I mean it's all relief. The ornamentation's all relief, but I mean that little piece. What's uh, the shepherd scene? All the ornaments were done in uh, 3ds Max uh, okay. with uh, sub D modeling workflow. Okay. And uh, the uh, Jesus panel, for example. I will open the ZBrush file if you want. Of her. Yeah. So you're saying the ornamentation's done in Max. Yes, the only stuff that was done in uh, ZBrush was uh, the uh, Jesus panel. It was at first uh, a scan, okay. as you can see here. Yeah. Like uh, really uh, mushy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have rescreated off uh, all of the line in uh, ZBrush. Yeah. But uh, yes, all or ornaments were done in, uh, in a 3ds Max, as you oh. can see here. Yeah, quick questions before we get into the ornamentation. What did you use to scan? What was your procedure for that? For scan? Yeah. Well, uh, nothing fancy, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, of course, a camera like uh, everyone knows. And uh, I don't have really, uh, really uh, amazing tips and tricks to give. You take a photo as much as, as you can. Yeah around the objects in different angles, like uh, the horizon mm -hmm. top and a little bit the bottom if you can. Yeah. And one, one thing I would do, for example, a rock, while oh, this is done, is to reconstruct rec the bottom in a 3D coat oh, okay. with the uh, clone tool. I will try to show later if I um, for the for the imagery are you using something like Agisoft to combine them all and create the scan or do you use something else to create the scan? Uh yes, it was uh, Agisoft, yes. Okay, good. Yeah. It's a great program. So powerful. It's ridiculous actually. Yeah, it worked really good, yes. Okay. All right, cool. Well I um I don't know about other people, but I think one of the fundamental problems that we have is understanding ornamentation. And if there's any um, advice you can give on how you created some of these beautiful flower um, and ornament patterns, it would be, you know, I think very, very useful. Let me. Such a beautiful render, too, man. Great job. Thank you. Wow. Sorry for the time, it's three days max. <laughs> All good. All good. Come on. Let me delete that for now. Mm. Yes. 
Okay, good. So let's take this example. One of the main thing in the uh, ornament is uh, intimidation. You know, when you see uh, a hutch piece of uh, ornament like uh, something like that, of course. Yes, yes. Like this kind of stuff, you know? Mm hmm you, Your first reaction often when you, you start modeling is, uh, no way I'm going to do that, you know? It's impossible, never going to make it. But once you, you get your topology and methodology down, it's always the same, you know? Like, for example, let's try... Uh, Scroll. Let me keep it open. Can you do me a favor and make sure um, Rahi? Rahid sees this. Who? Rahid, he's um he's one of our students. He's working on ornamentation right now. So I want to uh, make sure that we get this to him. Okay, do you want me uh, to wait a bit? No, 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 it's good. He, I was just checking to see if he's here. He's not here right now, but I'll make sure he sees it. Okay. One tip to make a perfect uh, square, quad square, square, sphere, sorry, in a 3D, in a 3D modeling, mm -hmm. specifically in a 3D Max here, is to start with a cube, and then add a turbo smooth on top of it, then add the um, spherify modifier, and you will have a perfect sphere, quadify, because the uh, The basic sphere when a subdivided, you know, you got this ugly artifact shading. I don't, I don't know if you can see. You can see that? Mm, a little bit. I see a pole. A little bit. Not so obvious here, but it's hard to see. Yes. Uh, there, okay. Yeah, we see it sometimes. Yeah, but it's 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 hard and it may not translate in the across the web very well. But I I know what you're talking about with the the end gun, the pole right there at the edge, or at the end, top and bottom. So, for scroll, I will start with a eight sided uh, sphere. Mm -hmm. F A V to collapse it a bit. Here we go. I'm not working with a reference here, but I will advise to do so. I'm a bit used to it, so it's okay. What? Actually, what the f that's this one. Sorry. Okay. So I will try to do the scroll by following the number of sides I have in mm -hmm. my mesh, for example. 
let me so this will connect letter to to this sub okay Mm, and I see you're and you're aiming that right towards, you know, that yes. vertice that you're going to connect it to. I got it. To try to keep a certain uh, flow, you know, edge flow. Totally. And uh, one thing I will advise too is to don't bother really much about the uh, orientation, you know, of the scroll because okay. the scroll often, you know, goes down here. Yeah. Don't bother with that at the beginning. Try to get the shape good, and you can always add at the end of FFD and just move stuff. But already you can see up. If you can. So let's say that's. and start to bridge. At the loop here, you will see And here you can connect this one to this one, so you get a quad. Don't bother too much for now about uh, this. And here you can cap. And you can add. Here we go, and move this one to keep the edge flow. Are you purposely avoiding any triangles? Yeah, for now, it, when learning, it's good to get good to topology and, and solving problem mm -hmm. and try to work with the quad. But in the end, it's not really important. If the result is good, then you don't really care, you know? But when you learn 3D, it's the best practice to uh, start with a, a good solving problem uh, knowledge, you know? Yeah. Because if you start doing uh, worse stuff, etc., when you're going to have a problem on a match that will be solved easily by a quad, we don't know how to do it, if uh, that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Ma just make sure that you, um, I mean, quads are the preference. Uh, and you're just trying not but to build any bad habits. You know. Yeah. Yes. At the beginning, yes. So what's important about edge flow? You know, if you got too much edge, try in general try to keep as much low poly as possible when doing sub modeling. You know. Because if you have too much geometry, it's going to be a pain to modify the match at the, at the end. You can already see what? Come on now. Yes, okay. Let's say this is flat.
So you see it start to gain in shape at the end with the croton loop here, it will uh, flatten this uh, artifact. Quickly, just extrude that. It's done at care, just for the example. Let's say you want. Okay. So what I was saying earlier, try to keep the the base, the main shape, mm -hmm. and then after moving uh, the stuff with the F D modifier, mm -hmm. it's going to maintain the shape and be much easier on uh, your life and your time. Got it. It can be a pain in the ass, <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the key I'm thing, going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> the key thing, if if I understand you correctly, the key thing is to build it in two D, where you just build the relief for each one of these parts, and then you establish the overlap. Correct? Yes. Try to keep it as low poly as possible, and uh, get the shape right and move it later. Exactly like this one. This one, this was completely flat. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, you had the, uh, the tuber smooth. And it all and comes together. Voila. Yeah. Here, for example, long, you know, that's uh, maybe uh, three weeks. I didn't do uh, on the month. Mm -hmm. And that I already see mistake here. And it's causing this nice a little bit of pinching here. Mm -hmm. It's a bit weird. But generally, yes, always do ornament with a reference. And is it, always. do you find that it's like a real mindset kind of thing? Like you really just, like you just got to get in and, and be doing ornamentation for a bit. And, you know, if you step and take, like you said, three weeks away. It, you know, it takes you a bit to get your head back around it. Yeah, you you definitely did need a warm up. Yeah, you, you know, because you you get easily lost if you're not uh, used to it. Like you know, uh, yeah, and this is not the correct way. Yeah. Like no, I see it. But for the purpose of the uh, demonstration, I think this is good enough. Good. Yeah, there's a great comment by uh, or note by Joseph that it's like he was under the expectation that he should be producing these results quickly and um you know seeing the process really helps him understand that's that it you know it's a it's a time intensive thing yes it can be yes yeah uh Cerise so asking do you use smoothing groups for this uh, yes um, i think you mean a uh, smoothing group with um turbo smooth the mm, workflow yeah. uh, turbo smooth with a smoothing group yeah Yes, I mainly use uh, that workflow for art surface stuff. Yes, okay. you're not going to use that with a uh, ornament. No okay. way. <laughs> okay, it's not going to work. Yeah. 
All right, sounds good. So I think that's a really great demonstration of, of what we would take to do that. Now, you've got a lot of ornamentation here, but you know, is is it just a lot of duplicates? Is there or is there a lot of ornamentation? You've yes, got that's thing? exactly what I wanted to show. Okay, symmetry. Uh, where is it? Like, of course, not going to be here. What the hell? Anyway, I'm going to use this this one. So yeah, that's a good ex example. The use of uh, symmetry is a uh, a big time saver. You can what? <laughs> you can quickly get a ton of variation of the same mesh. Like for example, up. If I want to do this kind of stuff, then let's say you had FFD. You can quickly get a ton of uh, different results, and then bake or any anything you would like to an alpha, mm -hmm. and reproject that, for example, on a plane in a ZBrush. Okay. But yeah, symmetry is a, a time saver and a life saver. Okay, cool. But that is, so you're just building a small group of pieces and then pulling it all together and combining. Okay, I got it, great. Yeah, you don't always have to make everything connected, you know. That is going to work perfect, perfectly well when uh, you're going to bake uh, in uh, whatever software you want to use mm -hmm. for baking. Yeah. And uh, you can uh, quickly export that in a ZBrush and a DynaMesh. Okay. And uh, there we go, that will be uh, one single mesh. Oh, got it. Yeah. And uh, what he's referring to, guys, is you can just take this into ZBrush. You just DynaMesh it as is, and you just you put a high DynaMesh resolution on it, and it'll it'll create the bevels and yeah, merge exactly, everything. Yes. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Simple. And then you can decimate it for, if you had to, for God's sakes. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Well, so this, ooh, yeah, look at that. So one, two. Same three. example, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not all attached. Yeah. This is a... Out of piece, single piece, then a dynamic in a ZBrush. That's great. And it's, it's the same workflow once you get a base, you know, there's nothing complicated in the topology here mm -hmm. when you, you look at it. And it's all quad too, that's great. It's time consuming. But uh, it's fun, but it can be a pain in the ass, yes. <laughs> Grab your but it's, herbal uh, tea. It's and, it. Yeah. It's yeah. worth it. You know, that's one of the things I think, um, actually, yeah, I should just ask you because ornamentation's hard. It takes time. How does it show in a portfolio? Do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's valuable to have in a portfolio and it's something that's helped you land jobs? I think, for example, if you want to do a piece like that with a lot of ornaments, if I was to redo it, yeah. I would not obligatory uh, make uh, everything uh, by hand. Mm -hmm. Even if, uh, in this case, this was difficult because uh, Gothic is uh, it's not really, you know, a panel with uh, ungraved ornament, you know what I mean? It's uh, geometry. But, for example, if someone wants to do a furniture, I will do online the, the main shape as a 3D model and do the rest as a alpha ZBrush uh, projection and not a waste uh, time in, uh, 
uh, doing everything by hand, you know, is in a studio, for example, you're not going to, to waste your, your life uh, doing everything by hand. You're going to do uh, the main shape and uh, you're going to uh, project alpha and everything that can be used, for example, in a substance painter. Mm -hmm. So it can be valuable because you can show how far you went in uh, 3D mod modeling, but it's, go it's not really what uh, people will see uh, in the hand. Is a final piece, and whatever I mean, uh, you you use it to uh, get air, you know. Okay. Got it. Awesome. All right. Well, I think there we've got it, guys. Um, uh, Lily, do you want to put your art station back up so they know where to find you, where they so they can follow you on art station there? Yeah, no problem. All right, guys, head over to art station. Make sure you give a big thanks. Um, you know, for all the time uh, that we've had today. And uh, Walid, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, giving us some yeah, tips. Yeah, no problem. And, uh, I hope and, it was uh, smooth. Yeah. Because I'm awesome. a bit, uh, yes. It's getting late there. If you got any question, guys, don't hesitate to email me and me on Skype. Uh, I'm always open uh, to ro show you something if you want uh, or awesome. anything uh, you would like to see. I can share it uh, with you, no problem. Man, thank you so much, and congrats on this work. This thing's, this thing's a thing of beauty. Oh, every time I see it. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care, everybody, and uh, thanks, Wally. Thank you very much, Ryan. Thank you, guys. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.